All right, guys, so our final topic, like we've said here, is going to be our, I guess this is technically your final warning. Mandalorian Season 2 spoiler review is about to happen. Um, so but before I get into it, though, there is one thing that I want, like, I don't know, I guess if you haven't seen the first episode, this would still be considered a spoiler. So be warned, we're going to get into a, a, a sort of news topic that has came out about um, potentially Season 3 of The Mandalorian and a spinoff series of The Mandalorian. Um, that would have potentially a character that may or may not have appeared in the first uh, episode of Two of Mandalorian. So, be warned, spoiler review starting now. So, and uh, John, I don't know if you heard, me and Rick were actually talking about this and pretty much gave uh, a brief spoiler. We had a spoiler-filled discussion of uh, this episode uh, during the stream last night. And uh, okay. so, but well, I brought up too, though, that this article came out and I don't know if you've seen this one, but it uh, they're 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 saying that is I think it was like what did I say as early as like next week or something that they could be actually shooting a spin. And this is from Deadline, everybody. This isn't like you know some random uh, you know uh, uh, rumor it, or... rumor. Some I mean, it's kind of a rumor. I mean, it is it is a rumor, but it's from a credible source. It's not from yeah. you know. Your uncle's cousin who knows a janitor. That yeah, works on the, exactly. Yeah. It's from a <laughs> reputable source. They're saying that uh, essentially a, a, a spinoff series starring Boba Fett, so a Boba Fett spinoff series, could potentially be in production here and start as early as next week or later this month. And then immediately following the production of this spinoff series, maybe a Boba Fett one, uh, they would start shooting uh, Mandalorian Season 3. So, like, and this is like I said, it's it's not confirmed by the 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 source, the deadline source who wrote the article that it is going to be a Boba Fett spinoff series, but that's what he is hearing, like the rumors of he or she that they're here. It's just that uh, this is the so Nelly here wrote the article, and uh, so that's what they're hearing though. So, John, what do you think? Before we get into the spoiler review stuff, what do you think about there potentially being a Boba Fett spinoff blanket? One exists. Um, I really like the Mandalorian, so spinning off of it. I, I mean, I'm, I'm, but my my expectations are tempered. I mean, we've talked about Boba Fett here and like how he was cool, but now that we know more about him, and you know, is is he really that cool? And you know, I I just it'll be whatever it'll be. I think it all depends on what they do with him in this season of the Mandalorian. As to whether or not I'll be really hyped for a, because I don't want to see just the Mandalorian done with Boba Fett. You know, I, I don't, right. I don't, I don't care about that. I don't care necessarily about um, what's going to happen with Boba Fett unless they give me a reason to care. Um, you know, I, I, I spent what thirty years thinking Boba Fett was dead in a sarlacc. So True. you know, I. Yeah. I <laughs> Uh, you know, I was I was at peace with Boba Fett, so you know it's it's an interesting idea. Um, I'm I'm sure I'll watch when it comes out. I just don't know that I'll have the same level of excitement as I do for the new Mandalorian episodes. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to yeah. live or die by however they set them up. Because I I told Rick during the stream, like I do not care about like I don't want a prequel. Like, I don't want them to, I don't care about anything that led up to the events of Boba Fett now as we see him. Like, if they take the story, and since this is supposed to be a spinoff of The Mandalorian, I'm going to assume that it's a safe bet that it would take place with the Boba Fett we're seeing now, and they wouldn't do any sort of backstory. Um, like, I guess if they wanted to have, like, an explaino version of how he got out of the Sarlacc pit, fine. But, like, I don't, I don't How much care. can you really go into? Yeah, I he mean, got out. But yeah, he got, yeah. Once he gets out, it's kind of done with. It was probably exactly how Mando got out of the uh, the, the dragon thing, and that yeah, you know what I mean. He did just like blue. Yeah, the crate dragon. He just shot his way out, like, and he flew out. Like that's probably all it was. Like, I don't know. Uh, I just it's not really. I don't care about like like I don't, we've just seen it all. I don't really care like the Boba. That like bounty hunting and just finding random people like I don't know. There's definitely I feel like more they could like, definitely set up with his character now. Not that they've given us anything uh, in the Mandalorian you know yet, 
but the, I, I feel like there's much more they could get into with like his more current timeline and yeah. they could possibly make a compelling story. I, don't see, I guess I don't see why they couldn't make a compelling story by any means, but I don't know. I've never thought Boba Fett was that interesting of a character to begin with. Uh, I've said at nauseum, especially once, uh, once you learned, at least, at least this is how I feel. So I know there's a lot of Boba Fett fanboys out there and I don't understand why because he doesn't do anything. <laughs> like he just stood there, he looked cool, he has Mandalorian armor. There's so like our Mandalorian here, Jin is mu a much cooler Mandalorian character. He's done so much more and he's got baby Yoda to boot. Like, <laughs> he, like all you saw like it, it, I can get why he was like beloved when, you know, the original trilogy was the only thing that anybody had cuz he looked cool, but then man and he just gets beat by blind han solo in the end then falls in the sarlacc but he doesn't do anything cool like at all so i never understood it's just people decide he looked cool but at this point we've gotten so many cooler mandalorians so just care like i honestly i don't really i've never wanted a boba fett movie or anything like that so unless they set him up cool in this show i could get i could i could take it i could leave it it doesn't matter to me you know what I mean? So it's gonna let, it's gonna live and die by however they set him up in this. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, but I don't really see what else you could do a spinoff of either because I really don't think uh, what's her name is it Cardoon? What's her character? Yeah. Uh, and uh, I don't really think her Carl Weathers uh, character are gonna have. I love how I, Gina Carano. Jeez, I could think of the yeah. character's name but not the actress name for one, <laughs> and then I finally remembered Carl Weathers' name, like. I blank on Carl Weathers' name every time I, I talk about the Mandalorian. But I don't think Gina Carano's character and uh, Carl Weathers' character would really make all that great of a show by itself, like, in all honesty. So, I don't know. Like, we'll have to see. I, I'll definitely, if they set uh, Boba Fett up cool and good in this show, then I guess I'll be fine with them doing the spinoff, but I don't know. Rick, what do you think? Well, Rob, I'm glad you asked. Um, you know, I can kind of, the more I think about it, I can take it or leave it. Uh, you know, Boba Fett's always been a favorite character of mine, but the more we've discussed it, I've found out that you're pretty much right about it. I mean, there's just not a lot of depth to him as a character. And it just makes you wonder if they were going to do a spinoff show about this, like, how much could they really do with it? You know, mm -hmm. that that's my opinion, but I still like his armor. I still like the way he looks. You know, Empire Strikes Back, he was really cool in that. Not so much in Return of the Jedi, but um, it, it, it's lens to like, is it going to be a prequel? Is it going to be the future? How exciting would it even be if it's the future? You know, he's an older guy at this point, so I don't know. I could take it early. The Mandalorian to me is a much more exciting show, and the idea of it is much more exciting than what a Boba Fett series would be. That's kind of how I feel about it. Like in the end, like it's just I, I feel like everything that we've seen our like this Mandalorian do has just been so much. Obviously, it's been so much cooler than the Boba. You know what it really is too, though. Other than just being cooler, Boba Fett, it's a new thing. Like you mean, like He's... I've always complained too. Like not only do I complain that Boba Fett's not that cool, guys, I always complain that Star Wars just they. They stay in the same timeline with everything they do anymore. Like they, just, they, they for whatever yeah. reason, they do, they're like afraid to tell new stories. Yeah, like, they're afraid to go back or forward or anything. And, yeah, they uh, just they play it safe in this little sandbox of just you know Din, around the trilogy or after. It's do something new. Din Djarin has so much more depth to him as a character, you know, from what we've seen so far, at least. That I just. Uh, <laughs> I kind of lost interest in Boba Fett in a way. <laughs> yeah. I mean, It'll be cool to see him in the yeah, show. Like the Clone Wars animated show. Like they just had, there's so much more like Mandalorian stuff out there that I just, like, oh, yeah. I don't know. Like Boba Fett is not, he's not that cool guys. Like I'm not looks trying cool. to beat anybody with it. Like not, if you like Boba Fett, it's fine. Like, you can like Boba Fett. This is better characters out there in my opinion. I think I'm a little more willing to give Boba Fett a, a little bit of a break with the Han. I, I agree he was beat by a blind Han Solo, but it wasn't like they were actually squaring off and and he took him down. Han Han turned around and Boba was facing. He Jar Jar Han's binks way. him, dude. Like he <laughs> got Fett. bumped into Han him. That makes it worse. Accidentally, he accidentally hit a button on his back on his jetpack that made him 
lose control. Yeah, and I, you I, saw I, what Jin Jarn could do with his backpack in this episode, though. Like, you know what I mean? Like, come on. Yeah, cool little Easter Boba, egg. Boba had, Boba had, like, the Mark I armor, though. Jetpack. He, did. he didn't have Mark 26 armor jetpack. So. Really oh, quick little Easter egg that I thought was cool that I saw online. When Han Solo knocks him into the Sarlacc pit, he damages the jetpack. When you see in the first episode uh, the guy wearing it, I forget his name. Uh, sorry, I feel stupid saying that. The guy that's wearing it, he uh, actually has the mark on the backpack, but it's repaired. You can see where it literally is repaired on the backpack, which I was like, that's pretty cool. We're on the jetpack. That is pretty cool. They're like yeah. tiny little Easter eggs, kind of like with that that's R5 awesome. unit having like the splatter exactly where it, it blew up, like on Luke and Owen's farm. But, yeah. Uh, Star Wars tends to do that sort of thing, like little fandom Easter eggs. Continuity, yeah, continuity yeah. threads, yeah. And this pod racer and a little speeder bike, too. It's not confirmed, but I mean, it looks dead on. Yeah. I mean, no, I thought, too, like I saw someone say that like, it actually was Anakin's. Like, because cool. it looks exactly like one of Anakin's. Like a modified version. Yeah, but it looks like the exact one. Like, yeah. it's, it's obviously there's two engines on the pod racer. It looks like they literally took the one and then made it into like a yeah. speeder bike. Yeah. So I don't know. Take that or leave it. But like, that was cool. There's been, there's been some good Easter eggs in there. So let's, let's get into this a spoiler uh, review here, too. Because actually, I want to pose a question to you, uh, John, before we start mm -hmm. talking spoiler, just heavy stuff. I brought this up to Rick. <laughs> and I want to see what you think about it. Because like, I think question. you came into the stream. Uh, when we, when I when we were ending it, and I, we were talking about this. Like, do you think I want to get your thoughts on it? Do you think Mandalorian, if you take the Star Wars out of it, do you think it's still a good show? Because I saw people online talking about this, and I thought it was an interesting thing. So, and I know you you seemed like you were you thought I was crazy to even be like talking about it, but uh, I don't know. When, when I yeah, you're crazy. Thing, I'm crazy. It's, crazy. Sense. Yeah, it's a great show, man. All right, so here I'll 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 I'll, I'll give my quick defense of uh, the Mandalorian. Um, I think that they do an excellent job of creating a. Uh, for those of you that saw the movie Logan, the Logan or a lone wolf and cub, um, if anybody gets the graphic novel reference, there uh, series. Um, it's 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 about a, an old gunslinger that's that's got this young child or this young person that they've taken under their wing and and that they've been given the the responsibility of of guiding or shepherding back to somewhere and um I, the the thing that I really liked about the first season and and maybe less so this season um that they seem to have gotten away from is you know, if you remove the classic elements of Star Wars from this show, if you remove the the Force, if you remove lightsabers, if you remove the Rebels and the Empire, um, this show still works without all that. It it worked in the absence of a lot of that for the first season. Now they did get into the lore of Star Wars a lot towards the end of the season, where you had. Um, some of the leftover empire coming back and, and there are elements of those things that show up in the series, but it could have easily been a, um, a, you know, just a, a, a rogue criminal organization that wanted him to go out and get baby Yoda. Um, and yes, baby Yoda and the force are intrinsically tied together. And so the force is in there and, and you wonder if you remove the forces, baby Yoda is compelling. And I, I think he is a, obviously he's unique because he's tied to Yoda. But again, that's it. this is the world that you're set in. You want to see those types of things in this universe. It would be like if you said, "Is a Spider-Man movie if you you know interesting if you don't have Spider-Man in it or if you don't have his web shooters in it or something." It's like, well, I mean, maybe maybe the idea of Peter Parker trying to you know scrape by with with very little money and, and having troubles at school and stuff can still be compelling. Um, but then you add in all the other stuff because you want to see a Spider-Man movie. So you take this, this story and what they've done with this show and you add in the star Wars stuff because you want to see a star Wars show. So um, I, I do, I think it's a good show. I think it's good regardless of it's star Wars or not. Well, that's the thing too. And I, th I totally agree because like I, I um, 
it's hard to take like the show like like you said when you take it out of the context of star wars it's almost like an unfair like you said it an unfair advantage in some ways and it also doesn't make a whole lot of sense given you know baby yoda like you said like the force and like everything like it's i don't know like and i think you're you're all more right you know in the sense that it is more of just like a western kind of show and i think a lot of people still don't really understand that that is what the show is and like that is what they're going for like at its roots is that it's a like gritty old 70s western where they have the overarching plot like you know with this like the empire looming and then you know, like the dark saber stuff introduced at the end, like that's kind of like the overarching story, right? Like them trying to get you know Baby Yoda back and like all that stuff. But like the real core, like purpose of the show is the flavor of the week kind of thing. Like, what mm-hmm. adventure is Mando gonna be on? Like in th- this week, you know, like what's mm-hmm. what's the story today? It, like the overarching plot's there, but that's not really what the show is you know, I, th- I don't think a lot of people get that at least to me that's what it is and that's what they're going for because i mean if you look back at all like there's there's numerous episodes that like they fit in and help progress the character more so than they progress the story like yeah. that, that, that you know that looming plot kind of thing and like no that's 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 what the show is to each episode each, a lot of well not each but a lot of the episodes so far have he you know I think in a in a traditional TV series where you have you know a, a long twenty one episode arc, everybody talks about the filler episodes, and, and this has those filler episodes to a certain extent, which is actually one of my small gripes with this season is that season two, I feel like we are just getting filler episodes so far. Really, there's been yeah. very little, very little advancement or even reference to the overarching story that uh, of mando getting the yoda back besides he's looking for other mandalorians um that that being said they 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 do a good job of making those what traditionally would be filler episodes into meaty episodes actually give you a different flavor of the show so you had the the prison break show last year where they tried to break out the guy from the from the prison and then the tables got turned on mando um you've had the you know they get they get stranded somewhere and they need to figure out a way to to repair their ship and get where they need to go. You've had the one where they help out a a, a town that's being overrun by evil people and they free it. You know, so you get different flavors of shows mixed in with this, you know, sci fi epic. Right, and that's the thing, and that's what I don't think because Rick said the same thing. Like, uh, like he he felt initially that this uh, he might still think it. I don't know, but like. That this episode in particular uh, felt just more like just like a filler episode. And I've seen a lot of people online to say that it was just like a filler episode. And that's where I'm saying, like, that's what the show is actually supposed to be. Like, the Mm -hmm. show isn't trying to, like, at least to me, the show is designed to be, like, just almost like... Yeah, the adventures of Mando. The adventures of Mando, yeah. Like, not... I have this, like, yes, they have a plan for, like, the, this overarching story, but, like, that's not all they're focusing on. Like, they, they like, the filler episodes, quote-unquote, it's not really, like, in some ways, they, they always progress the character more so mm-hmm. than that story. Like, in this, in, this, in this most recent episode, when they try to, like, those bounty hunters come at the beginning and they try to take Baby Yoda from him, it advanced the character of Baby Yoda in a way they hadn't really done before in some way. And it's always subtle because these are typically pretty short episodes for the most part, too, which is yeah. just pretty much my biggest gripe with the show is I wish the episodes were a little bit longer. Um, but you got to see like how much Baby Yoda like really cares for Mando. Like mm-hmm. when, like when all that happened, like he reached out to him and just like you know, like, like Dad. wanted the embrace, you know, like you know, you you never got that really before. Like he saved him, like from like the rhino thing and like the fire and all that stuff. Like he saved him and stuff. But like in this situation, like after the knife was held up to him, and he saved him. Like he, you could just see that like Baby Yoda like really cares for Mando. Like their connection is growing much 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 more than it had before and you never really got to like see that and then like uh 
in the episode in season one where they save the village uh the that that whatever the the village people and everything um that episode it didn't just say it was like a side quest kind of thing where they're going to save it but it progressed the mando's character and revealed much more to like us about who mando was more than almost any other episode of that entire season yeah. you know what i mean like it was just it's all about pro, it's it's all about progressing the character and not that main story you know what i mean that's why like i can see why people would like say like i don't really disagree that it's like a filler episode if you're defining a filler episode by not advancing that plot but that's where i just i i not really take issue with it but i'm just saying like that's the point of the show so I mean, I don't know if it's it's kind of like trying to say like is it a good show if you take Star Wars out of it? I don't really feel like that's a good that's a fair yeah. it's not a fair like representation of the show because when you take the context of it out, it doesn't really it's not the same thing at that point. Yeah, you know? it's totally different. Yeah, I watch it because I like Star Wars. Like, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. It's like in like in the, I don't know. I just feel like they're trying to do like the the side quest stuff. So and like that's just like kind of like uh, it's a good gives the it. show its heart. You know. Yeah. I don't know. What did you? Uh, what was your guys' thoughts about the the episode though itself? But we've been talking more about the uh, the dichotomy of the you know the the Mandalorian's existence and everything. But uh, what uh, what what were your overall thoughts on the episode? Is there anything that stood out to you? Anything you didn't like? I thought it was good. Off the top, I didn't really like the frog lady. I I, I, I was <laughs> telling Rick, I felt like she. It felt more like a Muppet character to me. Like, you know, I, I don't know why. Like, in like, yeah, there's tons of like alien creatures and stuff in Star Wars, and like, they're all fine. But this one, for whatever reason, it just reminded me of like the Muppets or uh, Dark Crystal or something. Like, it just, it, it, yeah, it did kind of, I could see that. Yeah, you know it had I mean? a very, had a very early ILM feel to it. Yeah, like, it's not that, like, it, it, it felt more Star Wars than like that. Whatever her character, that character from Tatooine, the the, the yeah. ship hanger lady, Can completely not Star Wars character. Her dialogue, <laughs> the way she acts, everything is so not Star Wars. I don't know. The woman could she, be the most amazing is, person. Like, and I'm not dogging her, but like the character, she's it's not playing. Working. She's playing a role. She's playing the role of the surly mechanic, which, uh, yeah. you know, it's it, it's a trope that, that is used in, you know, if, if this if this was a show set in, in New York, um, this I was going to say the, that the, the surly mechanic that yeah, was at the auto shop and hey, what you talking about here? Exactly. Hey. You know, I mean, and she's just she's she's a little more energetic and animated than than we've seen in some of the other characters but she's also kind of a she she's she, i think they're trying to make her an for lack of a better way an everybody type of character somebody that everybody can relate to and, and i don't know i just i i, I, I don't I get think what that's working going. though i get what I, yeah I, I, was, I was gonna say I, I i understand what they're going for i i do understand why it doesn't work quite as yeah. well for some people because it like, does I just the, I I, tone. I it's the tone the way the lines are delivered like everything about her does not feel it just feels out of place and this is like it's not just because she's just like a human like Carl Weathers is fine Gina Carano is fine it's her to, energy. to be honest it's everything when you, yeah it's so when you think about the frenetic energetic characters in the Star Wars universe who do you think of Jar Jar Binks. Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> So you don't like I can't think of another character that had that kind of just really animated over the top energy in the Star Wars universe in any of the Me films. Neither, honestly. Yeah. I think that's why it feels so out of place because we haven't had those before. So I mean maybe that's just it. Like I mean, I don't know. Like like I said, the woman could be an absolute sweetheart. I, I have no idea. I'm sure I'm she not, is. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure she is. Well, and I she's just had don't like the character. I think I think I think that she has had a couple moments in the show where I felt like genuinely like she was, a, you know, her character had had sweet moments with baby Yoda where she found him and like was taking care of him when when she tones it down, when they bring it down a notch with her and have her just be, you know, right. it, it works a little more. Well, her quip at the end where she said, like, I swear my like I swear on my life, but she like, I bowed my life on her or whatever. But then she says, like, you know, like, oh, I just met her like 10 minutes ago. 
like whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, that was like that was funny. I guess it was fine. Like it was a comedic moment. Yeah, I could just do without the character. Like and then yeah. she was like that whole episode when she came in on season one was my least favorite episode, and now like she's a returning character for the first two of this one. Not that it's been like just really like it's not like it's painful like it's not like Jar Jar level just like annoying by any means just it feels out of place it's really like yeah. it's, I don't know this feels out of place what did you guys uh think about the seeing the rebels uh, that was gonna, that was the cool. New Republic that was really cool. and then uh, and man there's some assholes aren't they <laughs> no no wonder no wonder the First Order was able to rise up again so quickly man who yeah. wants who wants these guys being your being your governing body when they're like, you know what? I'm leaving you stranded on this planet, bitch. Like, yeah, right. right. <laughs> like his ship was all messed up and stuff. And yeah. Like you know what? We're not gonna arrest you. But it was like it really was like uh, Bruce in uh, Batman Begins. Like literally when he's when he's like, I'm not gonna kill you, but I don't have to save you. Yeah, like, exactly. Just fucking leave him there. Like he's got a he's got a fucking kid, and he's got this <laughs> frog lady with her babies that are gonna end their line, and they're just like, nah. Yeah, no, it's, it's like, like we'll shoot out, the spiders, but yeah. And then Baby Yoda it. too. He's like, who would have thought that uh, he's like the most vicious creature in the galaxy, dude? Right? He's yeah, babies. babies and... He's pretty savage. Yeah, I mean, we uh, saw. We saw in the first one he eats like the actual frog thing, and then now on this that one, wasn't so bad. No, no, no. But like this was a frog lady and her eggs, so maybe it's just a frog. He's thing. a baby though. He doesn't really have the grasp. He can't really grasp the concept that it's like this is the last of her. I mean, he can use the force and he can do all kinds of crazy shit, but he's like but that's yeah. instinct. That's yeah, yeah. That's all right. instinct. It's not a conscious decision to. Yeah, he's just a baby. He's trying to eat some food. Like, yeah, the fifty and delicious food. food. It's like it's like putting a candy bar in front of a toddler. You know, it's like, like you're gonna eat it. Yeah, yeah, right. All right. Do you think? Uh, do you think it brings another level of? Uh, this is kind of meta, but like, assuming obviously it's the same race as Yoda. I mean, like, assuming. Does it, does, yeah, assuming. True. Like, do you think like it brings like new light to like? Like Yoda as a character, like that's just <laughs> kind of pretty stuff dark. He was into like, you know, just like this cannibalistic like <laughs> they, little man. They have, yeah, they've made the they've made Baby Yoda very a very uh pretty hardcore carnivore in this show. Even with, yeah. with him, weren't they cooking the meat and he was kind of like his mouth? You could almost see his mouth watering. Yeah, when cooking <laughs> the meat up and stuff. yeah man. That's what I'm saying. He's like vicious and like kind of does like it. It brings like a whole other makes you look at Yoda on a whole new. He's like this wise old mentor man who was kind of kooky later on in his years. You know, with Luke on Dagobah and everything. Just like this crazy old guy. And then you see in like the prequels, he was like a pretty sophisticated little little green dude and then a very wise fight. person. But then he could fight. He whooped up on Dooku like real, real easy. Yeah. But then like now you see Baby Yoda just like cannibalistic. Dude. He's just wanting to I, eat everything. Just he's, it don't matter if it's this lady's babies. He just, just spider eggs. Like it don't matter. You, you they don't want to get. You don't want to get Yoda hangry. Yeah, dude. If you think sure. about it, the whole reason the spiders attacked them because of Baby Yoda. It was yeah. Like that whole episode would have never happened had he had not just like walked off for a few seconds and thought like I'm gonna eat one of these. I blame the frog lady for wanting to go in the hot spring first. That's true. true. Yeah, because she wanted to be warm. She's an amphibian, and that is a nice touch too. Though, it was like cold blooded, so she's like, I need to, I need to level this out so you can <laughs> yeah. the spring. You know, like and, nice and a spider so, cave. Yeah. So the. the were how how closely are they towing the line to infringement with the alien <laughs> with those pods and the, right? the spiders coming yeah, out of them? Right. I thought for sure that thing was going to jump out into onto his face, like a xenomorph. Yeah, yeah, or a face. Okay. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't like the little like it's, even the giant spider. They had like its second like mouth thing too. You know what I mean? Like the little thing that came out. It was kind of. Yeah. It was very xenomorph. It was xenomorphy. Like a little xenomorphy. And then Dave Filoni was one of the the X Wing pilots. Yeah. So I mean that was just like an Easter egg for everybody. Then the, the other actor too, uh the uh the the Asian one was uh I don't know his his name, but uh, he he was from uh like a new sitcom. I think it's called Kim's Convenience or something. 
So like I don't I don't know what he just kind of popped up there. Like I don't know if he's been in anything else, but I heard that online. There's your mm-hmm. those were because in the previous episode, the or not the previous, but the last season, the uh the pilots were TIE fighter pilots in the first one in the first season. I can't remember, but uh Deborah I think it was Deborah Chu. They were X Wing pilots. Huh? They were they? TIE fighter pilots, no. They were X Wing pilots, right? In yeah. The were like A Wing or so. I don't remember. They were rebels, right? They were rebels. Yeah, no, yeah. But uh, what uh, two of the directors were the pilots, or maybe three of the directors? I can't remember. It's been a while since I've seen that. Oh, in the jailbreak episode? Yeah. Right but yeah, th- those were the directors. Oh, okay. Like, I think I think there were four of them. There was three or four of them. Like, Dave Filoni was one of them, and that one too, I think. And then. Uh, I remember if her name is I think it's Deborah Chow, the uh, the director who has directed the best episodes of season one, and then Rick Bamayua was uh, the other Rebel pilot too. First one, but and then Deborah Cho is uh Deborah Cho Chow. I can't remember. She's doing the uh, Obi Wan show. Which speaking of okay. spinoffs and Boba Fett stuff, like I just want that Obi Wan show. Mm-hmm. That's gonna be. I'm excited for that. Not to change topic here. I'm stoked for that, man. I'm very excited for that. But yeah, I could. Uh, where, where do you think they're going after this? Do so you think we're going to see like Boba Fett again? Because there wasn't really a whole lot oh, to this sure. one, other than, uh, I mean, like I said, at the beginning, the bounty hunters try to take him and uh, take Baby Yoda, and then you get you got to see, like I said, you know, Baby Yoda and Mando's affection for each other, and then I mean, after that, it was just kind of like lost in space for a little bit, you know, or like a. Like, I think we compared it to even, like, a Firefly episode just happened to, like, transport the person and do this, and then they have to make the stop and, like, whatever. Just, I don't know, it kind of, well, it kind of felt like a Firefly episode, like, in particular. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, so there wasn't a whole lot really to do, like, uh, at least talk about why. Where do you think they're going to go next? Think it's going to be another, you think they're going to pick up on that overarching plot next time, or is it going to be another, you know, story well, I sort of, week? I, I certainly hope so. I mean, we're a quarter of the way through the season already, and it, no even reference to the dark blade or the empire that he's still the grand um moff what's his name moff gideon moff gideon that moff gideon's still looking for him and still out there this they haven't even referenced that. out there no. yeah they haven't referenced he hasn't even said like shoot they're chasing me right now like there's just nothing you they have not been yeah there's, that, the, there's been no indication that the empire's even been on their tail really i guess he did say during because he couldn't use the hyperspace for the eggs, he did say, like, I'm being followed and he ended quick. True. Mm-hmm. So that's like, but I mean, that's it though. How about hyperspace gonna affect them eggs though? Like, let's be real. It destabilizes them. It's a plot device. That's yeah. how. Yeah. Like, they needed them to be able to be caught. <laughs> like, that. Yeah. That was really it. I noticed too that well, it looks like in the Star Wars world, they've definitely got spray paint. If you look at that picture. <laughs> Oh, this, this picture. Yeah, like that is quite obviously like some Krylon spray paint. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Well, um, I, you know, and then you get the tease of Boba Fett at the end of episode one. And, you know, unless that's all that was, unless they were just showing that, hey, Boba Fett's alive to keep their options open for him later. I don't like he's got to now either Boba Fett's got to decide to leave Tatooine just because another Mandalorian came and settled there, which, you know. Maybe that's good enough reason after all these years. Or you've got to have Mando go back to Tatooine for some reason, which doesn't seem likely considering he's already been there and not found what he was looking for. So I'm very confused about what they're doing and how they're setting up this season. So Yeah, I am confused about what they're doing with Boba Fett, in all honesty, because like... Like, you got to have him there. You have, if, if they're, if they'll say they're going to do the spinoff, okay? Then they have to have him there again, and but then like to what end? So. Mm-hmm. Question: huh? They never really showed when he wrecked the speeder bike. They never really showed him recovering the armor. He got so distracted with his own jetpack and all that sort of stuff. You know, like what if Boba Fett was just like, "Oh shit, here's the armor." You know, like they didn't show him pick it up and put it back on a ship or anything well, like that. I that thought would, he got rid of the. Armor. I thought he. I thought he did because remember he was lugging everything on that bar. Oh, true. On his yeah. Back walking, and I didn't tell me make a reference to. Aren't you? I didn't think you cut their own heads off or something. That's very true. Just the helmet. I think I, I remember, remember seeing the helmet hanging there in the. That's back true. Too. Right, my bad. Okay. 
But the thing is with the Boba Fett and his armor thing, like I, and like I said like last week when we were talking the first episode, he had to have given that armor up. Like for whatever reason, probably to like trade for like sustenance. I mean, when that's what stuck I said. In the like, like pit. Yeah. Yeah. once the empire fell and like, like he probably had that was his job, dude. Like the rebels aren't gonna pay him to go be a bounty hunter now that the empire has fallen and the republic is there. They don't handle it that way. So like, I'm sure bounty hunter jobs, especially like one of his stature, have... is probably wanted by the republic because if you remember out of this episode, there was a bounty quote-unquote, on Mando's head. The Republic, there was a warrant out for him, like, to be arrested, like, yeah. by them. Because they're like, you've got a warrant out for your arrest. Yeah, yeah, so I'm sure Boba Fett was 100%. Had a warrant on him, too. He was explicitly worked for Darth Vader in uh, Darth Sidious. So uh, I'm pretty sure he... Pro like, my guess is that he gave up the armor once, he, once all this stuff went down, Empire's Fallen... He's just laying low on Tantooine, so he probably sold it. He's not really your traditional Mandalorian. So it's not like, like he has much of a connection yeah, to the armor it, outside yeah, of it's like what exactly. is dead war. Exactly. Like that's it. Like I could it is odd though, if anything though, because especially with the whole teaser stuff in I guess you call it a teaser. The tease that happened in Attack of the Clones when Django dies and you know gets beheaded. And they, they tease, like, the camera pulls back, and you see that, you know, uh, Boba saw it happen, and then they zoom in on the helmet. They, that's the Boba Fett tease right there. So you think he would have some connection to that helmet. That's what I was thinking. Like, uh, if yeah. anything. You'd think he'd want to keep his helmet, but who knows? Like, he's how in that position, but how, what? how dark and disturbing is it to think that you know in order to get that helmet he had to remove his dad's dead head from his decapitated head yeah yeah that's, that's true too pretty dark it is dark give it a nice little paint job yeah but i don't know i i'm assuming like like you said john this kind of like we're a quarter of the way through this thing and i mean like it is kind of disappointing in some ways so they haven't touched on like that overarching plot at all and especially when we know, like, they introduced Boba Fett at the last end of last season, they introduced a dark saber, saber which mm -hmm. is a pretty big, like, bomb to drop on people who knew anything about it. And then you get the rumors that, uh, like, Ahsoka Tano is going to be in this season. Mm -hmm. And, like, so there's three main things there that, like, people want to see. Like, those are big three things you can't really drop on people, in my opinion, and then just kind of, like, Oh yeah, that that one scene with Boba Fett ominously looking off in the distance. That's all we get. Like, yeah. then, you know what I mean. And then the dark saber stuff with Gideon. I know he was real cool in season one, and we teased the dark saber stuff, but he's only going to show up in the last episode again. Kind of like disappointing in some ways if they go that route. Hopefully yeah. They I feel like they could have balanced the season out a little more. Like maybe when, maybe when all the seasons are done and you sit down and you watch this over the course of a month and you're, you don't have the breaks in between seasons and you are able to jump straight from episode eight into episode nine, maybe it will feel more cohesive and more, but when there's been such a long break and you're starting a brand new season, I feel like touching upon the, some of the threads that you left from the previous season is, you need to do that in the first quarter of your season, your new season. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I felt like they did a good job setting up the first episode, but I don't know. Like, in some ways, like, because, like, you at least knew, like, it picked up kind of right after, like, that, that last season in some ways. Mm -hmm. Just, like, on the run, trying to get Baby Yoda where it needs to go. That picked up good, but then, I don't know, I felt like there'd be a little bit more information about what's going on what the plan is like going forward other than i don't know two episodes in and like you kind of said we don't really know any more than what we knew at the end of season one yeah yeah you know, like oh i gotta get baby yoda home so yeah but i don't know all in all i thought it was good i just hope that the next episode is better is not as much better. A more, I, like, they dive, yeah i hope they dive more into like that overarching plot you know like sure. i get the story of the week stuff and i like it it's fine but they set up such a compelling story with the dark saber in particular, in my opinion. You got and hyped. Yeah, then knowing Ahsoka Tano is going to be in it, I'm obviously assuming that that's going to have a connection to the dark saber in some way. And then, like, like I said before, 
Boba Fett could, you know, meet Mando and give him more insight to like a different look on like Mandalorian culture. And then same could be said for when the Mando meets Ahsoka, like the completely other look at the Mandalorian culture from them. So like, you know I mean? And to him, he knows this thing that he was brought up in, which even to us as a viewer, we know like there are completely different Mandalorians out there than what, what we're seeing him as. You know I mean, like, cause like his version of a Mandalorian and like their creed and everything they have is like, it's all new. Like that's like new Mandalorian lore is specific to him and his clan. Like yeah. there's no other Mandalorians have been like that in star Wars at all. Mm-hmm. So like, there's like some cool dichotomy that can happen with Boba Fett meeting him and then Ahsoka meeting him. And then mind can be blown. Cool stuff can happen. So I'm looking forward to it though. You guys got any closing thoughts on it? I think we covered everything. Yeah. I'm good. Yeah, with no, that. It's good. Right, well, then we're going to wrap it up here, then, guys. This is going to be it. So, uh, what did you let us know down in the comment section below what you guys thought of season two, or yeah, season two, episode two of The Mandalorian? I think that it was, I don't get why, too. I think I don't know, this is going to be a nitpick. They, they went on Disney Plus, they're called like chapter one to chapter 13, but then they also have names for the episode. So, it was like the marshal and the passenger, the passenger. And it's like, was well, it chapter 12 or 13, or is it the marshal or the passenger? Just, just aside, you know. I guess, I guess in, I guess in books, it does the same thing, though, right? So maybe I'm just nitpicking. So I don't know. But let us know what you guys thought of the season two, episode two of The Mandalorian, down in the comment section below. Mm-hmm.